Hi everyone, welcome back. So I'm going to go a little bit more into depth in this uh, analysis of chaos as an intermittently forced linear system for some uh, more advanced examples from the real world. Okay, so just remember we have this Henkel alternative view of Koopman, this havoc analysis. The idea here is you have uh, a real system, a complex chaotic system, you have limited measurements, a time series of limited measurements of your system. You build up a Henkel matrix by taking time shifted copies of this measurement, stacking them as rows of a Henkel matrix. And if you take the singular value decomposition, you get these eigen time delay coordinates that you can then use uh, to get an embedded, a delay embedding. So this delay embedded attractor is diffeomorphic to the original Lorentz attractor. And what's cool is that this Henkel matrix, the columns are all spanned by the first dominant columns of this U matrix from the singular value decomposition. And it turns out that this provides an intrinsic data-driven measurement system that's invariant to the Koopman operator. Okay, so we've shown that previously. And what that means is that in these eigen time delay coordinates, we actually have some hope of getting a linear model a linear representation of the dynamics. Uh, and so what we do is we build this linear regression model from all of the V coordinates. So V dot equals this linear operator times V, where V are these eigentime delay coordinates. Now the last row, the, the last time delay coordinate VR is never very well approximated uh, by this linear model. So this last row is kind of a bad fit. So instead, we decide we're not going to try to model that. That's an external forcing, okay? So we have our first r minus 1 delay coordinates is given by some linear model in the first r minus 1 delay coordinates plus some forcing from the vr, the rth, or last time delay coordinate. Uh, and so plotting that for the Lorentz system, you see, again, this intermittent forcing in red. That's this forcing that's hard to model, but it's this internal, sorry, this external forcing you get this linear dynamics, uh, the model prediction from these linear dynamics in blue gives you a very good reconstructed attractor. And again, you find that when this intermittent forcing is large or active, um, that's when this system is about to switch lobes. Okay, so the, the bursting or the large intermittent forcing is actually predictive of lobe switching, which is very neat. So we can apply this to tons of different examples. All of this code you can download and try these for yourself. But right now we're going to zoom in on a couple of the really physically relevant systems of the Earth's magnetic field and the measles outbreak. So looking at the Earth's magnetic field is, is kind of neat. So we're running a simulation based on uh, the, work, the work below. And this is basically a simulation of the magnetohydrodynamic equations that are forced by, you know, turbulence inside the Earth's crust. It's a very cool model. Um, this numerical simulation can give you the attractor switching in the Earth's magnetic field corresponding to field reversal. Okay, so we've known for quite some time that the Earth's magnetic field on geological timescales, the North Pole sometimes actually flips. Um, and it's kind of hard to predict. We'd love to have a good prediction of this. We know by looking at the, you know, the crust that this has happened in the past. And so this is a very simple model that describes this lobe switching. So you have two attractors corresponding to the North Pole, kind of this way, and the South Pole. Um, and so these red trajectories correspond to when the Earth's magnetic field flips. Okay, so when you flip poles, that's this red trajectory here where the forcing in our havoc model is active. And it's kind of neat that you also get these, these um, trajectories that almost flip, but then they come back. So there are times where the Earth's magnetic field almost flips, but it doesn't, okay? According to this model, at least. Um, but that, that's kind of neat. So if we look in at the, the, time, the time history, these eigen time delay coordinates, we have V1, this is our dominant time history, and VR, this is our external forcing. Uh, and I'm plotting VR squared here to make it a little more pronounced and all positive. And what we do is we color code this by whether or not the forcing is larger than some threshold value, we color it red. And if the forcing is small, smaller than a threshold value, we color it white. 
And recall that when the forcing is not active, the system is really well described by this linear, excuse me, linear Koopman model. And when the forcing is, is active, some essential nonlinearity is forcing the system and, and making something interesting happen. Now, what's really fascinating here is that the system, whenever it's in this quiescent state, that the forcing is inactive. And any time it's about to switch, the forcing jumps up. And so if we zoom in, we want to know if this is actually predictive or not. So this is zooming into a couple of these field switching events. And you see that it's just doing its normal fluctuations. And then here, it's about to jump. Uh, the field's about to flip. And what's interesting is I would, I would challenge you, if you didn't have this color coded and you, if you didn't know, if you were just measuring this in time, you might not know when it's about to flip. You might say it's going to flip here, or you might not know it's going to flip here. This is within the expected kind of variance of the signal. But when this system is ready to, to switch, you get a jump in this external forcing, clear as day, this very big signature that says the system is about to switch. And it's pretty good at predicting. It doesn't, it's not 100%, but it is pretty good at predicting when the system is about to switch. Uh, this forcing turns on. And you can see from the zoom in that it's actually quite predictive, right? These are, you know, you're getting a, a heads up that is preceding what you might be guessing just by, by eyeball. Okay, so now let's look at the, the measles outbreak data. This is a really neat data set. This is, you know, actual occurrences of measles outbreaks binned every two weeks from 1928 to 1964 in New York City. Uh, and this is actually a data set that's been well studied in the context of time delay uh, embedding. So Sugihara and May have, have studied this in their seminal paper and many, many since. And this is what the data looks like in our Eigen time delay coordinates. So the steady state where there's no measles corresponds to the origin. And you essentially find that measles outbreaks are excursions from the origin. So the system bursts and then comes back, bursts and then comes back. And the bigger the burst, the worse the outbreak. Okay, so this is kind of the outbreak severity over here. And again, you can plot the same, uh, the same model prediction with the havoc analysis. So here you see the forcing uh, color coded by red. It's a little harder to see um, because actually this one stands out as so large. But you can see that when the forcing is active, is red, you have these big kind of uh, measles epidemics or outbreaks. And the bigger the forcing, the bigger the outbreak. So what I think is really interesting is if you zoom in on this, this is the worst outbreak in this time series. And if you zoom in, you actually see that there are a couple little dips in the, in the measurement that could easily have been false predictions, right? Here you also see one. This is a little dip. It would be easy for you to say, oh no, there's going to be a measles outbreak because you see that dip. But the forcing didn't say that there's going to be an outbreak. It waited until right here where it's actually not even in a dip. And then the forcing kicks on clear as day and says there's going to be a measles outbreak. And if you zoom in, you can actually see that when this jumps up, it jumps up more for this big measles outbreak than for the others. So you might actually be able to not only get a prediction that there's going to be measles outbreak, but you might also get a, a prediction of the severity of the outbreak based on uh, the, the, this forcing signal. And this is a forcing signal you can measure, right? You're, you're collecting data, you're measuring the system, so you actually know what that forcing signal is now. And so if that forcing signal gets large, you know that. You can measure that and you can predict that you are likely to go into, uh, you know, once every 30 year measles outbreak. Okay, so this is just a short overview. Um, you can download all of the code for every example uh, on my website and try all of these yourself. Um, it's really fun. One of the things I like about this is that if you have data, you can plug it in and start analyzing and building models and building predictions and gaining insights right off the bat. So, um, so please download the code, try it on your data, try it on this data. Um, thank you very much.